Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Digital Classroom. This time, we're going to take a look at this shot. And how did I do this? Now, when we look at the backdrop here, we see something like a theater door, right? And that also gives me that idea of nighttime and a model, or in this case, of course, a woman or a girl waiting for somebody to pick her up. Or maybe she's tired after a party or maybe there's a killer around. So you can imagine everything you want as long as it fits the narrative of your lighting and the look. And that's something that you, of course, have to do as a photographer because you can think about all that stuff like, hey, she's waiting for somebody, she's waiting in the rain, but now you have to shoot it and the only thing you have is the backdrop, right? Okay, so how do we create mood and atmosphere in a shot like this? Well, as you can see in the lighting setup, I'm using a beauty dish with a grid from one side. Now, this is pretty directional lighting. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get the model in the center of the light beam and just get a little bit of light hitting her on the back and hitting her on the front. Uh, sorry, hitting the backdrop behind the model. So that means that it feels like there's light coming from the top down. And this is something that's really nice because when you look on location like theater doors like this, there's often a light on top of it, right? Now, by using that light under an angle, the beauty dish, I am creating on the backdrop something that mimics, it doesn't look exactly the same, but it mimics a light that's on top of that door aiming down. And look at the backdrop, you actually see that there's a little bit of a, almost a vignette-like quality of light there. And that's because of the beauty dish and the grid. Now, of course, the light doesn't come from the back, because if the light would come from the back like an original door, we don't see the model's face, right? The model's face would be totally dark, because the light is behind the model. So this is where we do a little bit of fakery. In other words, the backdrop looks like there's a light on top, but because we move the beauty dish a little bit to the side, we also light our model. Now, in all essence, when you look at this as a photographer, you know that the lighting isn't right because the lighting is coming from a different angle. However, if you are not a photographer, you might be fooled by this and you think that it's really shot like this. And this is the nice thing. We as photographers see stuff differently. So, how do we create the other mood in the shot? Because there's clearly something blue in the shot, right? Now, for the blue, I'm actually using one strobe aimed straight at our ceiling with a blue gel. Now, the reason I'm doing this is very simple. I don't want any extra shadows and I want an omnidirectional light source and as broad as possible and as soft as possible. Now, soft light is always big light, right? Big soft boxes, big surfaces, soft light. Well, the ceiling, that's pretty big. So we're aiming that light towards the ceiling to get a very, very nice, even lighting for blue. But how strong should I put that light in there? This is something that you always have to remember. You can always calculate it in stops. Like for example, if your main light is on F8, you can always go one stop down and you still see a lot of blue. If you go two stops down, that blue will come, become a little bit more saturated and a little bit more subdued. If you go three stops down, blue will become more like a U. It becomes a little bit in there. You can see it, but you can barely see it. If you go four stops under, the blue will become really, really dark. Five stops under and it will be almost gone. Now, this doesn't always work for every backdrop. For example, with a white backdrop, you can go a lot lower. With a black backdrop, eh, not that much because the blue will actually disappear earlier. So how do you compensate that? Well, in essence, if you want to meter something like this correctly, you need something called a spot meter. Now, I'm not going to tell you guys that you need to buy a spot meter because in essence with live views nowadays, you don't really need a spot meter anymore unless you do stuff like this, of course. So how did we do it? Of course, we're shooting tether to an iPad, right? Or to a laptop or whatever you want to shoot tether to. Now with Tethered, the main issue is that we get our images straight on the computer to judge sharpness, but also color, pose, and of course, how everything looks together. And that's the main thing about this. You can still meter it, but with metering, you still have to take that into account in your mind like, okay, so I'm going four stops down, so it will look a little bit like this, but the backdrop is black. You see me thinking about that stuff and you're never 100% sure that you nailed it. When you're using tethering, you immediately see the image on the screen 
And this is where this really shines. I'm just going to lower the blue. Okay, I like this, maybe a little bit higher, a little bit lower. It's digital, guys. It doesn't cost you anything. So the main light is always set up with a light meter. The accent lights is a little bit like cooking. You look at the image, you like it, great. If you don't like it, add a little bit more, take a little bit off. It's exactly like cooking with pepper and salt. You put a little bit more in and a little bit less. The main thing about this setup is that the blue light gives you a little bit of an idea of it was shot at night. And that's actually weird. Think about it. Color evokes emotion. And this is used a lot in movies, but also in photography. Think about movies, for example. If you walk over the street at night and you just look at the lighting, is that blue? No, of course not. It's a bit, bit yellowish or maybe white, but depending on what, what kind of lights they use, of course, on your street. But it's never blue. So why in every movie? At nighttime, it's always blue outside. Weird, right? Well, blue is an emotional color. And when I ask you, what is the first emotion you see with red? That's probably danger, love, warm. Um, there's so many emotions connected to red. With blue, it's cold, distance, a little bit scary. So that fits, of course, perfect for a night scene. And I think this is one of the reasons that Hollywood makes everything at night a little bit more blue, although it doesn't make any sense. This also means that in our mind, we are triggered that if we see something like a shot like this with a little bit of blue, it's immediately believable that it was shot at nighttime. Again, it doesn't make any sense at all, but because we are triggered by that blue, it looks like nighttime. And that's actually what I'm using here. Now, there is more to the shot, because what you see now is actually not the final shot. I'm using a different lens for the final shot. So let's take a look at that shot. And of course, we took different ones, but... I like the best. Okay, so you, you saw the shots, right? There's something weird with the focus going on. So what? Well, let me grab this. This is a so-called Lens Baby Composer. And the nice thing about the Lens Baby Composer is that you can literally break the lens, as you can see here. So you can make the focus appear any way you want. Let me put it in the front. I hope you can see it on the video. So you can literally just do whatever you want with this lens. And the nice thing about this is, think about this. When you aim your camera straight at a wall at 1.0, and you know it's straight at the wall, everything will be sharp, right? Maybe in the corners a little bit less, but okay. Now you're aiming that same camera at 5.6, but you aim it under an angle. The aperture is smaller, right? So you should get more into focus. But because you're shooting under an angle, there's one bar that's sharp and everything else will be out of focus. So what's going on? Well, that's because under an angle, you of course have different distances between the wall and your camera, meaning that one part will be in focus, everything else will be further or closer, so it's out of focus. But sometimes you don't want to shoot under an angle, you want to shoot straight, but you still want that focus effect. And this is where these lenses come in really, really handy. Because now I can just bend the lens, aim my camera up, and I still shoot straight. But the sensor is still under an angle. So you get beautiful, beautiful effects with focus. For me, a lens like the Lens Baby also adds a little bit of lens flare, like the black mist filters. I always say, and it's a little bit weird to tell you guys, but those lenses add a little bit of magic to your shots. By using that focus, by using a little bit more lens flare, it's... For me, it really completes a shot and it makes it more believable that this was actually shot at night. Because let's be honest, if you shoot at night, you shoot wide open, right? Because there's a little bit of light and you need all that light to get in your sensor. So with a little bit less depth of field, it looks believable, right? So these lenses, by over exaggerating that effect a little bit, by adding blue, it just looks like a great shot. At least I really like the shot. Okay, so in this tip, what I wanted to give you guys is one, of course, color evokes emotion. So if you want to make something look like nighttime, maybe just add a little bit of blue. But I also want to make sure that you get the idea of creating light on the background 
which looks like the light is coming from the top down, but by aiming your light from an angle on that backdrop, you can literally create almost that same effect with a beauty dish. Because the beauty dish is round, you aim it under an angle so you get a little bit like that effect on the backdrop. In my opinion, that works like a charm for almost every backdrop. And it's a really powerful technique if you want to get some really funky light quality in your shots. And as you can see in the video, it's a really easy setup. You just have to aim it correctly. That was the tip for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what we do, subscribe to our channel, leave comments below, smash that like button because we really like that. But most of all, tell other people about our channel so we can grow. See you again next time. Bye guys.